In today's video, we're going to talk about the best concealer hacks for women over 50. Hey everyone, this is Lisa. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Lisa Monique Beauty, where we cover all things beauty and lifestyle for the over 50 woman. So this is not going to be testing out the newest viral concealer hack. This will just be a good overall video of using concealer to both conceal, cover your hyperpigmentation and dark spots, and to brighten those areas that need to be brightened, um, and how to get it to last all day long. I am using drugstore concealers today. I will address a few things, such as uh, under eye bags and dark circles, which I personally do not suffer from, so I won't be able to demonstrate the techniques as well, but I will uh, explain them. Let's go ahead and get started. So step one in having your concealer look beautiful and not cakey and dry in the under eye area is to have properly prepped skin. And I've said this time and time again, but if you do not have your under eye area moisturized, it doesn't matter what concealer you use. It can look cakey. It can emphasize your lines. Besides just having it more moisturized, when you have it freshly moisturized and plumped, your fine lines are diminished. So when you apply that concealer, it is going on evenly. It is not skipping in the crevices and things like that. So, and you're not having to rub to really blend into those uh, crevices and fine lines because they are as smooth as they ever are going to get uh, when they are freshly hydrated. So today I hydrated my eyes using the Dermatology Brightening Eye Mask. I've talked about these before. Uh, I really love them. They are back in stock. <laughs> they were out of stock. I love this serum. I actually rubbed some of the extra serum on my neck uh, and then I definitely blend it in. After I take off the eye mask, I rub the serum all around my eyes and I let it sit for a little bit. Now, if you don't have an eye mask, you do want to freshly moisturize your skin. I don't actually use specific eye creams, even though there are tons of them on the market. I will hydrate my under eye area with my regular moisturizer. So it's the e.l.f. Holy Hydration Moisturizer. Uh, when I'm sitting down, if I'm not straight out of the shower, it is the Embryolisse or the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream. Those are my favorite face moisturizers or, or moisturizing primers to use before I apply my makeup. So uh, that's what I will apply, making sure I concentrate on the eye area. So once my eyes are hydrated, you want to let it sit. So you, you apply your moisturizer and then you need to let everything sink down. So the first thing I will do, if I have a really dark circle, I will use my color corrector at this stage. A couple of them that I like, there's the Beauty Pot, no, the Beauty Pie. The Beauty Pie. This is the uh, Super Luminous Under Eye Genius Corrector. This one's beautiful peachy color. This is really good for my darker skin. And I actually apply it over my super hyperpigmentation spots. If I had the dark circles, really dark circles, you apply it really lightly right in the under eye area. I just use a flat brush. This is a synthetic brush. This one is the Refer brush because you know I love Refer. This is a number 28. Uh, I like it because it's nice and small and precise. Again, it's a combination of natural and synthetic hairs, uh, but you can use any small concealer brush to apply it right where you need to. If you have under eye bags, you are going to apply your concealer to the underside of your under eye bag. So you are gonna apply it where the shadow is, where that dark line is that you uh, probably see. That's where you're gonna apply your color corrector. You don't need to apply it all over. You do not need to apply it on the top puffy side. Uh, so you just wanna keep it in the shadows um, to correct that darker color. And then for me, I also apply it coming up here because this area is a little bit darker for me. So I apply it on this kind of inner corner, kind of going up towards my eyelid. So now we're going to go to our concealers for covering hyperpigmentation and dark spots. And the number one hint is to let your concealer set before you blend it out. So on my face, where I have tons of hyperpigmentation, dark spots, I have bleach spots, dark spots, I have, you know, all kinds of things going on on my face. In fact, it's hard to find a spot on my face, which is a normal shade. But to cover the spots on your face, you want a long lasting drier concealer. This is not the place that you want to use all the ones with the hyaluronic acids and the serums and all that stuff. You want full coverage. Um, maybe even a matte finish 
on your face to cover up your hyperpigmentation spot. And so today I used the L'Oreal Infallible 24 Hour Wear Concealer and this shade is 400 Caramel. So when I'm uh, choosing a shade to cover spots on my face, I want to match my skin tone exactly or go slightly darker. Now this one is slightly darker. So you dab it on your face, uh, on those areas, and then you let it set for just a little bit. You want it to thicken up a little bit. Now this way you're using a lot less concealer. You know, you're keeping more of it on your face. So when you apply the concealer and you blend it, immediately you're blending half of it off. That's something I've been trying and it really has made my coverage last so much longer because I'm leaving more pigment over my spots when I let it thicken up before I blend it out. And then once I blend it out, um, I just kind of stipple it out. You can use any firm brush that you have. It doesn't have to be this particular shape, but this is what I use and I stipple it out. Then I take my stands out sponge and you can just use a tissue. You don't have to have my stands out sponge, but I use it dry and I blot off and push in that concealer, but I am lifting up any extra pigment left on my face. So now I have pretty good coverage on my face and my next step is to set the concealer. So this is something that came through as viral hacks and then um, I think Wayne Goss has talked about doing this technique. I think he puts powder. I think he lightly powders his face first and then he sets it with setting spray uh, because I don't want all these layers of powder and I know I'm going to powder later. <laughs> I just use a setting spray and what I have been doing is I've been spraying on my sponge. Now I'm using the Revlon Colorstay Lock 24 hour setting spray. Uh, these are drugstore. I also like the NYX matte finish setting spray. These have terrible sprays. The, this will knock you over and your face will be so wet if you try and spray this directly on your face. I mean, I really think you have to be at least arm's length um, to just get a fine mist. So these I actually spray on my sponge and then I blot over the concealer, let it dry. So that's a very important step, you know, making sure you set your concealer before you go in with your foundation. Because sometimes people put the concealer on and then go right on with the foundation. It's almost like wet paint, right? So you, you paint, and then you, you know, like, oh, it's, you know, it's set. Uh, so then you start your next coat too soon. But then when you start putting a wet paint over barely dry paint, you're actually just lifting up what's underneath. And so that's the same thing with concealer when you're covering your hyperpigmentation spots. That's why it's so important to set it before you go on with your foundation. Okay, so today I am using the Wayne Goss Cream Foundation and this is shade number four. I am mostly avoiding the eye area, but at the very end, I do just kind of swirl the foundation lightly around the eye area. Oh my goodness, can I back up? If you have really dark circles, this is really important too. I'm so sorry. And this is another Wayne Goss tip, which is why I'm remembering it right now. Uh, Wayne Goss had recommended to put an eyelid primer under your eyes. Now this is not the um, primers that I use that are shaded that have pigment in them. Uh, this is just a base primer. This one is a Fenty Beauty Primer, but um, I know Milani makes one. But you just want an eyeshadow primer underneath your eyes before your corrector. Important step if you have really dark under eyes. Your, a primer un, under your eyes is should be your number one step after your moisturizing. Okay, the next concealer hack is now in the brightening. So this is where I use the lighter formula concealers, again, because I don't have really dark circles. I use the serum concealers, and this is where I will, shoot, I will choose a shade that either matches my skin exactly or is just one shade brighter. I still do think it looks more youthful and makes me look less tired when I do brighten my under eye area and certain areas of my face. So this is where I brighten. I will put just a little bit right here under the eyes knowing I'm going to take it up right in this area. Then I'll put a little bit right at the back of my eye because it gets a little dark right here. Then I also want to brighten 
right here, the nasal labia folds because um, those go into a shadow. And then, you know, wherever you have a shadow on your face. So if your folds are darker, you can bring them all the way down. And then also right here underneath the corner of my lips right here, because this area, I want to make it look like it pops out a little bit more. So what I'm trying to do is make these areas look a little more like they're popping out. Now, notice I said I want to make it pop out. So if you have really big eye bags, you do not want to brighten the tops of your eye bags. If they're already popping out, you do not want to make it more noticeable. So if you need to use a concealer uh, to finish up the look on your eyes, you want to choose one that matches your foundation or your skin tone exactly. So if you have deep under eye bags, you want to make sure you're just putting the brightening concealer under the bag on that dark shadow. You do not want to apply it to the top of the bag. You will just use your foundation there, um, or if you have multiple concealers like I do, you can just use a concealer that actually matches your skin tone or your foundation on the top of your bag. And then it's the same. You are going to apply the concealer and you are going to let it sit. You're going to let it thicken up just a little bit. And then you will blend it out. You will lift up the extra concealer and you're going to do that same thing. You're going to spray your sponge and you are going to try it again. Now last year I tried the concealer hack where you would put your setting spray on your finger and you would pat the setting spray with your finger uh, over your concealer and you just keep patting until the setting spray absorbed. That was way too much setting spray for me. It just sucked all the moisture out of my under eye area and it didn't work for me. That hack did not work for me. I know it worked for a lot of people. It didn't work for my mature skin. But putting just a little bit on the sponge and setting, that makes it look beautiful and it dries it down. So even if I'm using a slightly creamier concealer for my brightening concealer, it is not going to move. And then I will dust it lightly with a setting powder. And I love, my favorite setting powder right now is the Wayne Goss, the Weightless Powder. This is such a finely milled powder. I don't think you can overuse it. I could bake with this powder and not have it look crepey under the eyes, but I'm not going to because I love this powder and I don't want to waste it. But when I was using this puff and I just puffed so much powder right on my nose um, and uh, you know, right in that under eye area. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's a my makeup is ruined now. And then I brushed it off and it still looked amazing. You cannot over powder with this powder or I have not been able to over powder with this powder. Then you just tap off the excess and then I tap off the excess on my arm and lightly, lightly, lightly powder this area uh, to keep these creamier concealers from moving. And then even, you know, and then I'll do the same going down here. And then I'm ready for the rest of my makeup. And my concealer and coverage is going to last all day. Okay, so this is a five hour check-in. I did just want to give you the five hour check-in. Uh, you can see I'm a little glowy right here. Uh, I tend to get a little more glowy with cream foundations. Um, I want to put a little bit more powder really just this area right here. But other than that, the concealer is still there. I think my hyperpigmentation is still well covered. I think my makeup still looks really smooth and fresh. And the, the concealer has not set into any of my lines and wrinkles. I don't think it's emphasizing my lines and wrinkles. I still see a brightening effect right here. So this technique really works. It, there were a lot of steps, I will admit. Just remember, they are not required for everyone. If you don't have eye bags, you might skip the eye bag portion. Um, if you don't have super dark under eye circles, you don't necessarily need to put a primer on before you start your color corrector. So I'm just kind of covering the whole gamut. So it may seem like a lot of techniques thrown out in this video, but you can piecemeal and just use whatever portion of this video that you need. Okay, and that's it for my concealer hack video. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.